You know, if you ride a motorcycle, sometimes it feels like the world is out to get you. You're hard to see on a bike, so cars will pull out in front of you. They don't have fear of motorcycles, so they'll often impede on your space out on the roadway. And construction, a lot of times, favors cars and takes little consideration of how motorcycles will be affected by that construction. And one particular example of this is tar snakes or uh, crack sealant that you'll find on roads. Cars don't have any problem with it, but motorcycles, on the other hand, can have a real problem if they're crossing over a corner in particular where there's a particularly wide patch of that tar or that crack sealant. So this week on MC Rider, let's talk about tar snakes and some strategies that you can use when you find them out on the road. Hey, if you're new here, my name's Kevin. I'm the host here at MC Rider, where we release a weekly video with the goal of helping make you a better rider. We have road strategy and skills exercises that you can use. And we also offer the field guide for patrons of MC Rider, where you can take your motorcycle on any open parking lot and we'll provide exercises through the field guide that you can work on to improve your skills and confidence on two wheels. You know, I firmly believe that we complain a lot about things and we rarely do anything about it. And as I was researching this video, I came up with the saying, it's possible it was said before, but I kind of like this saying, and that's complaining is not a substitute for strategy. A lot of times as motorcyclists, we complain about things, but we rarely look at what's under our control and what we can do about it. And one of those things that comes up often is tar snakes. So instead of just complaining about the issue or describing the issue, I also want to provide some strategy for you guys in our video this week and how you can deal with them. You know, after making this video and reading that quote a few times over and over, I decided I really like it. So I decided to make a shirt out of it. That's going to become the temporary MC Rider motto. Complaining is not a substitute for strategy. So I created a shirt. You can see the front of it here with the MC Rider logo and then our new saying on the back. And if you would like to order one of those, you can go to mcrider.com slash no complaints. And I'll have a link to that in the description. So mcrider.com, no complaints if you'd like to order one of these new shirts. So before we start talking about our strategy and dealing with tar snakes, let's define what they are so we're all on the same page here. Tar snakes or crack sealant is that black rubbery substance you'll see that road construction crews will use to fix cracks in the road. Now it's not really there to fill the crack up as much as it is to keep water from seeping under the surface and further eroding the road. So it's a water sealant. So when this is used to fill small cracks, it's really not much of a hazard to riders. It's more of a mental uh, hindrance than it is an actual physical problem on the road but it can be hazardous and downright dangerous if it's used improperly. There was a study done by the American Society for Testing and Materials back in the 90s, and they looked into the issue and they found that when it was appropriately applied, that tar snakes or crack sealant was no real threat to motorcyclists. So what is proper application? Well, the state of Ohio looked at that and they determined that proper application was not filling a crack any wider than five inches. Now, I don't know about you, but you know, five inches is pretty significant. If there's that much crack sealing in there and that stuff gets soft in the summer or slippery whenever it's wet, that could pose a significant threat to a motorcyclist, even if it's used under the standards that Ohio set forth of nothing greater than five inches. So the tar snakes are not really too much of a problem when they're in a straight line. You may feel the motorcycle wiggle a little bit as you're going over them, depending on the direction of the cracks and how your motorcycle tire hits the cracks. Where they become a bigger issue is through corners. It's like we said, they're slippery and wet surfaces, so you're temporarily going to lose traction. But what happens here more often in Texas is that tar gets really soft and when you lean the motorcycle over and you hit that tar patch, you can feel the motorcycle 
kind of wiggle as it's trying to regain or maintain traction through that corner and the surface underneath the tire is not firm like the pavement right ahead of it was so you'll feel some wiggle through that corner the reason why road crews and county crews use this to repair roads is because it's much cheaper than resurfacing the entire road and it allows them to get some extra life out of the road uh, before they have to resurface it. So it's not a problem that's going to be going away because it's a significant cost savings to the county and the states that maintain the roads. So if it's not going to go away, and remember complaining is not a substitute for strategy, more than just defining the problem we have to know how we're going to deal with it whenever we come across those on our next saturday afternoon ride so one of the first things that you can do as a strategy to deal with tar snakes is to make sure you've got good head and eye strategy as you approach a corner now, i've got several videos here on mc rider that talk about looking through a corner and your head and eye strategy and where you should be looking so go into our road strategy section for more detailed information on a head and eye strategy. But basically as you're approaching a corner, if you've taken an MSF class, you've heard an instructor tell you, you know, look through the corner, look where you want the motorcycle to go. Well, that's not necessarily just a blind look. You know, if you're approaching the corner, you don't wanna just look through that corner and not see what's in the corner as you approach it so the key word is look through the corner so as i'm approaching that corner i'm looking at that corner and i'm looking for road hazards or gravel tar snakes you know anything that could be in that corner i'm scanning through that corner and then before i lean the motorcycle over i'm turning my head and i'm looking through that corner for where i want the motorcycle to go but before i get into that corner before i lean the motorcycle over I've already scanned through the corner, making sure that it's clear and that it's safe to travel through there without any hazards. So if you're approaching a corner and you're using good head and eye strategy, you can see obstacles well in advance. And if you see tar snakes or gravel or any other obstacle, you can adjust your speed, you can adjust your lean angle, you can adjust your line through that corner to avoid the hazard. And that leads us to our second point, is that on the street you should ride in a manner so that you've always got traction braking and lean angle in reserve so on the street you need to ride in a manner so that you've got lean angle and traction in reserve so that you can deal with the what ifs you know on the track you don't have to worry about that because you know a track has been cleaned and it's free of obstacles and uh, gravel and things like that on the street there are always going to be what ifs and you need to keep speed, traction, and lean angle in reserve so that you can deal with those. But let's say you're out for a Saturday afternoon ride and you get lazy with your head and eye placement. I mean, it happens to all of us from time to time. Start thinking about something else and we'll let our mind drift even for a moment and we run upon a hazard that surprises us. So we're leaning the motorcycle over, we're going through the corner and we see a huge tar snake in the exact position that is going to affect us on the street well the biggest piece of advice that i can give you is to stay calm you know you will feel some shift as the motorcycle goes over it but unless the road crew has done a particularly bad job and according to the state of ohio that's nothing wider than you know five inches so that's a pretty wide piece of tar snake that it doesn't pose a significant threat to motorcyclists so when you hit that you're going to feel the motorcycle shift or adjust but in most instances it's not going to be a real impact to the motorcyclist unless their reaction to that causes the problem to get worse so staying calm is a huge thing on a motorcycle i saw a perfect example of that last weekend in the moto gp race i'm a huge moto gp fan i watch every race when it comes out and they raced last weekend in Italy and the four-time world champion Mark Marquez crashed in one of the corners but it was probably one of the most impressive crashes I've ever seen of a rider staying calm and collected in the midst of a crash Marquez was approaching the corner and he lost the front tire the front tire lost traction the motorcycle began to slide on its side but he continued to stay with that motorcycle all the way through the crash 
until it slid off the track. You know, most MotoGP racers have already let go of the handlebars by that time and slid away from the motorcycle, but he stayed calm and collected, and he had a chance for that bike to regain traction. And if you think that he was wasting his time, here's another example of Marquez where he stayed with the crash and he was able to get the motorcycle back upright again. So what can we learn from this example by Marquez? I mean, here's a rider in the midst of a crash that's staying calm and collected, and a lot of times he's able to save the motorcycle from that crash. Well, we go through that corner and we feel a little bit of wiggle on that tar snake and we immediately tense up and we grab the handlebars and we keep the motorcycle from doing what it needs to do to maintain traction or keep going down the road and we make the situation worse for ourselves or we approach the tar snake and we start staring at it and we fixate on that target and that means we're surely going to hit it and then the tires wiggle a little bit over that tar snake and we tense up and we run wide because we're not using good head and eye placement we're not looking where we want the motorcycle to go and we're not allowing the motorcycle to correct itself through the corner so staying calm in those situations is huge and it does take practice it takes training but that's what a lot of the benefit of parking lot training is is that mentally or subconsciously you're putting yourself in situations where you're staying calm and you're doing things that you're not going to see on a normal or everyday basis out on the street but you're slowly training your mind to be able to handle those things and it's going to put you in a much better position when you face those things out on the street so we go through that corner and we feel a little bit of wiggle and we tense up or we freeze up and we think that avoiding the crash is all dependent upon me where a lot of times if we just relaxed on the motorcycle the motorcycle would correct itself and it's not because of anything that i've done it's because of the forces of nature it's that gyroscopic effect of the tires underneath the motorcycle keeping it upright i saw a real interesting experiment i want to share with you guys that demonstrates the gyroscopic effect and what we've got working on our side those forces of nature that keep us upright on a motorcycle has very little to do with our skill it has a whole lot more to do with the design of a motorcycle so watch this experiment i think you'll find it interesting as well and i stick into that rope i attach to the rope this wheel just like so and i let it go well we all know it will happen clunk it's clear So we'll spin it up, and then we'll put it in here. Notice the way I'm spinning it. I'm holding it away from you now. From now, I'm going to change it and do it differently next. There it goes. About 10 seconds. Isn't that amazing? So you see, with no influence of anybody else, that wheel balances itself and it stays upright. And those same effects are happening on a motorcycle, even to a greater degree than shown in this demonstration because our wheels are heavier and they're spinning faster than what was shown in this demonstration. So we've got a lot that keeps us upright as long as we don't use our panic or our fear to tighten up and work against those gyroscopic effects. So tar snakes, are they a hazard? Well, according to Ohio, they can be if they're larger than five inches, but I would say more often than not, they're a hazard because of our reactions to them rather than the actual tar snake causing us to be involved in an accident. So as you're approaching those corners, make sure you're using good head and eye placement. You're picking a path of travel or a line through that corner to avoid the obstacle. You're keeping lean angle and path of travel in reserve so that you can use it when you need it. And you're not panicking if you feel a little bit of wiggle as the motorcycle goes through. 
you've come to expect it and you know how the motorcycle is going to handle when it hits one of those patches of tar. Did I leave anything out? Have you ever been involved in an accident involving a tar snake? I'd love to hear from you guys. I wasn't able to find a whole lot of examples where people actually crashed from these things, but a whole lot of people that felt uncomfortable from them. So I'd love to hear from you if you've been involved in an accident that was a direct result of a tar snake, whether it was your reaction to it or you lost traction directly because of the tar snake. I'd love to hear what your thoughts and ideas are in the comments section. Until next week, guys, it's Kevin with MT Rider, and we'll see you on the road. MC Rider is supported by our friends on Patreon. To learn how to support MC Rider and get access to the field guide, go to mcrider.com support.